All right. Good morning, my fellow apes, hominins, hominoids, whatever you want to call yourselves. So I want to explore an article today with y'all that is written by this dude here, Chris Stringer. Uh, this was published in 2012. That was... Will... That's alright though. The species of Homo heidelbergensis is still being debated. As far as its origins go. Um, so it, it, it makes a really good, interesting topic species to talk about. Yeah, Mr. White. Yes, yeah, science. So yeah, this video is a little different. I never do videos like this. This article in the description below for any of those who are uh, interested to read it. Here's what the, um, if you've seen my other video regarding Heidelbergensis, there's, uh, I, I talk about how it, it evolved from Homo antecessor around like 800,000 years ago. This bottom one, C, right here, belief, where it originated from. Essentially, yeah, it started with Homo erectus, evolving and coming out of Africa, moving on to other parts of the world like Europe, Asia, and then eventually evolved into other forms of hominin species. So from Homo erectus, it went to Antecessor, and then Heidelbergensis, African version, which was Rhodocensis. And Heidelbergensis in Europe. Uh, it emerged two different species, such as the Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. However, this author does not think that based off what I've read anyway. He has a different view about that. It's into like the traits of like different Heidelbergensis fossils, like their physical characteristics. They overlap those of Homo erectus as well as Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. See here is Heidelbergensis is kind of a messy, messy guy. It represents everything we got into archeology span for in the first place. Mm. He's, uh, he, he was in that transitional phase, you know, you know, when, uh, Erectus was fading out and then the emergence of two powerful new species such as Sapiens and Neanderthals came in the picture. So this is what makes this species, uh, intriguing. Table two, some fossils that may represent Homo heidelbergensis, famous well-known Heidelberg sites. The ones that basically defined it. Mar, Arago, Petrolona. I don't know how to say that last one. That one with the V. <laughs> uh, the ones with the question mark are ones that are still doubtful. So we don't know for certain. Like that's a, that attributes to Heidelbergensis. You know what I mean? So yeah, these are still questionable. Then we go on to Africa. And I've talked about some of this stuff in my previous video. I kind of got into some examples with some of these sites here. Like Broken Hill 1, which is also known as Cabway. Yeah, Bodo. And then, yeah, there's a lot. And there's also a lot of sites here. A lot of specimens with a question mark still that are still uncertain. That we don't know. It could be a different species. Some of these could attribute to Erectus, like some, especially the ones seen here in this next list uh, in Eastern Eurasia, uh, such as Narmada Man, Dali Man. Um, I believe these two, or no, I think Dali's from China and Narmada's from India. But yeah, we can look into these species together. You know, I'm kind of just exploring this article. And then there's Jin Shuan. Yeah, well, how do you say that? Jinishan. Bruh. I'm not too sure. And Yanshan. Oh, I'm gonna have to work on my, my Chinese, y'all. <laughs> oh, I butchered those words so bad. 
you know, what I found very interesting about this article, it says right here, it says the author's view here, in my view, while Narmada and Dali and Janushan may alternatively represent early Denisovans. Denisovans. So, for those who follow paleoanthropology, Denisovans are a recently discovered human species that were found in the Altai Mountains of Siberia. Not through fossils or any like remains, I think, except for a molar, I believe. Um, but it was discovered through genes, actually. I know anthropologists have taken samples from, you know, aboriginals that lived in Australia, Southeast Asia, Asian populations in general. They had a higher Denisovan uh, DNA compared to the rest of the world. As high as 9%, I believe. Maybe, no, I might be exaggerating that. Maybe 5%. I'd have to look into that again. Yeah, with this, though, in mind, yeah, because Denisovans are known to roam in Asia. They're an Asian species. So these specimens here, like Narmada and Dali, um, it's worth looking into. It's worth looking into. Uh, it, it's still uncertain. It's still uncertain. All right, y'all, let's take a look at some of these hominins. Let's look, let's look this up together. Let's start with Narmada Man. Because yeah, I'm not familiar with the Asian hominins, really. Okay, first human. He's considered to be the first human found in India. Piece of skull believed to be Homo erectus. So, for my general understanding of this guy, he was believed to be a Homo erectus. All right, so I guess here is his cranium. There's his cranium there. Wow. Here's Dolly Man. Oh, so there's a theory on him being a Denisovan. Dolly Man. <laughs> It's a loveless skull cranium. So what I know about this one, I guess they're saying like he was an archaic Homo sapien. So it could have been like a transitional Homo erectus kind of thing type situation. I'm itching like a fiend. Unshian. Yan Xiang Cranium. What the hell? What the? Look at that. <laughs> uh, what, what happened there? He oh, needs no. some what milk! What my guy? What happened to my guy over here? <laughs> that is the most deformed skull I have ever seen. He got like ran over or something? What? <laughs> What? That is wild. I'm gonna have to do some research on on these guys. But yeah, it's known for a long time that these these species these specimens right here are Homo erectus. But they could represent early Denisovans. Yeah. Let's see what our guy has to say in this paper. That's my main focus for this video, is connecting the dots with all these guys. Okay, he says here, However, new data on the possible eastern representatives of Heidelbergensis have emerged from the genomic study of fragmentary fossils at the southern Siberian site of, the, of Denisova, which is the original site of the discovery for that species. Uh, it says the initial mitochondrial DNA, uh, the messenger DNA, or no, sorry, mtDNA study of a large molar suggested an 
ancient lineage predating the divergence of Neanderthals and modern humans, but genomic reconstruction centered on a flanax indicated that the Denisovans, quote unquote, were actually a subgroup of the Neanderthal clade. Hmm. Yes, yeah, first time I've heard something like that. It could be a different species, though. Uh, this finding has fueled speculation that fossils previously considered to be possible Asian representatives of Heidelbergensis, such as Dali, the Genushan, and Narmada, could in fact be Denisovans. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Have we found our Denisovans? We may have. They may have been in our face the entire time. But we just already put a label on these guys and labeled them as erectus or archaic homo sapiens but they well could be in our faces already so anyways but this will remain uncertain until more complete material yields dna oh yeah we need to make sure first more ancient Asian specimens such as the Yunxian crania from China might still represent examples of Heidelbergensis. Just an Asian version of Heidelbergensis. And potential ancestors of the Denisovans, although biogeographic and archaeological arguments can be made against such an assignment. Um, yeah, this is interesting stuff. In addition, the presence of relatives of the Neanderthals in the Far East forcefully reminds us how much our views are biased by the attention paid to the European and African records. We cannot exclude an Asian origin for Heidelbergensis, given the similar ages, such as 600,000 years ago, assigned to the earliest if we exclude Tegenif. I don't even know if I said that right. Potential examples in Germany, like Maur, 22, in China, Yongxian, 45, in Ethiopia, Bodo, 46. So, yeah. Um, I feel like with the research of Heidelbergensis, it's mainly focused on, like, Africa and Europe. But I feel like not much research with Heidelbergensis is being done um, with Asia, as far as the possibility of it evolving from Asia or having remains in Asia. So I think that's what this article is kind of talking about here. All right, yo, check this shit out. Check this out. European populations could have been effectively isolated from their African and Asian counterparts. Moreover, increased aridity in North Africa and the Levant could have added to this paleogeographic separation. Whether increased selection or drift then operated to differentiate these separated population progressively is still uncertain. But Neanderthal-derived features are evident in Europe from MIS-11 onward. And then it says here, a comparable species... Ah, speciation scenario using the mechanisms of refugia has recently been proposed by Stuart and Stinger, the author. Uh, when a lineage adopts a new or refugial area or changes its area and it survives for a number of Milankovitch cycles, expanding from and contracting into that new refugium instead of its original refugium, it is destined to evolve into a distinct population. Given enough time and isolation, it will become a new species. A new refugium is unlikely to have the same flora, fauna, and ecology compared to the lineage's original place of origin, where they came from, which contributes selective pressure to adapt and diverge. <clears throat> So, for those who are still learning, like me, Milankovitch, I think that has to do with, like, glacial periods and stuff. See, so we're learning some stuff together. Milankovitch cyclical changes in the Earth's movements. Shut up, Siri. I didn't tell you to talk. <laughs> uh, that affects climate over thousands of years. 
Okay. I was close enough. I was close enough. I was mentioning earlier, the author has different viewpoints on uh, the origins of Heidelbergensis. He says here, Homo antecessor also seems like an unlikely ancestor for Homo Heidelbergensis, which means that the origin of Heibel, uh, Heidelbergensis is obscure. However, in my view, the main uncertainty about Homo Heidelbergensis is much more fundamental concern with its very nature. So he says the um, idiosyncratic morphology of the type specimen is currently problematic. Um, he says, but for me, an even more vexing issue is whether the species existed only in Western Eurasia and gave rise solely to the Neanderthals. Um, the main support for such a view has come from the derived Neanderthal features claimed for the species simultaneously differentiating it from contemporaneous African fossils and linking it to the succeeding Neanderthals. So I guess I can kind of see where he's getting at. Dude, damn, Siri keeps... She's listening, y'all. She's listening. She's listening to me. I think she wants to talk to me. Sorry, Siri. Not right now. Not right now. This is more important. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. Oh, uh, so yeah, I want to talk about the Denisovans real quick. Uh, the addition of Denisovans, quote unquote, to the hominin lexicon provides a further dimension to these discussions. The relationship of non erectus Asian Middle Pleistocene fossils to those further west has long been problematic, as he states, but now we have the potential to properly and Integrate the hominin records from Western and Eastern Eurasia for the first time, and to see Asian fossils like Dali and Jinushan as counterparts of the evolving Neanderthals further west. Indeed, it may be as logical to regard the Neanderthals as a Western subset of the Denisovan group as to consider, as is usually done, the inverse relationship. The concept of Homo heidelbergensis remains at the center of such discussions as this species represents the probable ultimate ancestor of these three daughter Allotaxa, Sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. So yeah, wow. That, it's, as you can see here, uh, <laughs> our boy Heidelbergensis has made a lot of problems on the family tree. We have some missing pieces that need to be added to the puzzle, but we just don't know what yet. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, thanks for reading that with me. Um, let me know what y'all's thoughts are on, on that. 